Hi, I'm Jeff Simon, AMP IA and President of Social Flight. And I'm here with the experts at Continental Aerospace Technologies to talk about lean of peak operations for your engine. Now when we talk about lean of peak operations, we can start with the concept of what is peak. Peak is peak exhaust gas temperature. An exhaust gas temperature is measured as it comes out of the engine and represents what's happening with the fuel-air mixture within the cylinder. We have fuel going in as well as air and the fuel is adjusted using the mixture knob. This ratio of fuel to air generates the efficiency of the burn within the cylinder. Now at its peak efficiency, you have the hottest gas temperature that's coming out of the cylinder. This is our peak EGT. However, aircraft engines are designed to use fuel for cooling as well and designed for best operation at what's known as a maximum recommended cruise power. And so therefore, we don't simply peak our mixture and leave it there. It's important to operate it for the safety of the engine as well as for the longevity of the engine and efficiency within the manufacturer's recommendations within your pilot's operating handbook. So there's a lot of things that go into understanding lean of peak operations so that we can run for the most efficiency and health of the engine and not always have to be using more fuel than the engine really needs. Let's get to the bottom of some of the details by talking to the experts at Continental. I'm here with James Foster and Tim Owen, product support engineers with Continental Aerospace Technologies. How are you doing, James? Doing great, thanks. Hi, Tim. Hi, Jeff. Now, lean of peak operations really isn't something new. I mean, on the simple aircraft that we trained on, uh, you, you pull the mixture back, the engine runs a little rough, put it in a couple clicks till it smooths out. That's essentially lean of peak operations, right? Yes. It's really when we start talking about high performance aircraft, high power engines, and fuel injection that we really need to understand what we're doing so that we don't damage the engine and we don't put any risk into the longevity of the engine either when operating it. And so you had mentioned, James, to me that the, you know, before we even talk lean of peak, we need to talk about setup. Yeah, absolutely. It is most critical and it's, it's very important to make sure that our fuel system setup is done first, uh, that we use calibrated gauges, we use the proper equipment, and that we're following the uh, most current revision of our maintenance standard manual so that we can uh, ensure that when we actually start adjusting the fuel mixture that we know that exactly what we're doing. Right, and this is something that we usually don't see in many shops, unfortunately, during regular annual inspections. You see mag timing get set up. But uh, this requires those specialized gauges to be able to measure what's happening with unmetered idle fuel pressure, metered full power pressure, um, being able to see all these things. And as you mentioned, that, that has to be done every annual, every 100 hour inspection. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we don't know exactly what amount of fuel the engine's getting so that we can safely operate it throughout that range. Correct. Now, uh, Tim, that brings up another point, and that is the next term that people really need to understand is max recommended cruise power. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure, Jeff. Um, max recommended cruise power is where we certify our engines. Uh, when we're in the test cell certifying engines, it's at 65% power. Okay. Uh, and we can lean at that 65% power setting, and we won't detonate an engine. So at 65% power and below, uh, we don't have to worry about detonating the engines. So nothing you can do with that red knob in the aircraft, as right. long as you are below that magic setting of max recommended cruise power can damage the engine. Correct. And that's what's in the pilot's operating handbook. Yes. If, I know I've looked at it in, in our Bonanza. You go through there, you can actually see what the RPM settings mm -hmm. are, what the manifold pressure settings are to get to that maximum number. And if your aircraft has one of those charts and doesn't specifically call that out, chances are it's the upper end of those charts. Correct, correct. And, and we give you the richer peak or best power setting, 75% power, and we want you to 75 to 100 degrees richer peak. Lena peak, 
our best economy is what we call it. Uh, we want you at 65% power and 25 to 50 degrees in Lima peak. Right, and so that those are two other very important uh, points to understand or what the definitions of those are. That best power, that's where you're using the fuel as you need it to get as right. fast as you can but still safely and with the right uh, uh, temperature control for the engine. Correct. And that be best economy operating it of course, not necessarily you know for the best speed but, but getting the best fuel savings which Correct. is really good for those of us who want to watch what our wallets <laughs> are doing while we're flying yeah. at the same time. And so if you're operating underneath or at the maximum recommended cruise power, you don't have to worry about what happens in between those two uh, areas, in between that maximum power and that maximum efficiency. No. I think the challenge happens when uh, people are exceeding that point and now they're operating above maximum recommended cruise power, let's say 75% power or more, and at this point uh, you're safe with certain rich of peak settings, Correct. and you're also safe with certain lean of peak settings, but you're not safe in between, right? Correct. So in between the rich of peak, lean of peak areas, uh, that's what they call the red box, that's what most people, the term is, uh, that's where detonation occurs. So let's talk for a minute about lean of peak versus rich of peak in terms of the longevity of the engine. Assuming that we're within all of these parameters and that we're operating the aircraft safely uh, and the engine properly, uh, does Continental have any thoughts on preferring one over another? No. no. <laughs> Anything below that 65% power setting, you can run lean to peak or rich to peak, it doesn't matter because you're not going to hurt that, that engine. Right, okay. And even RPM settings, uh, not necessarily a difference in that, it's all just about, just about as long as you're in the safe range, it's okay? Well, we have a minimum cruise RPM that uh, on certain big bore continentals, um, 2300 RPM, we want you to stay above it. But as far as lean, uh, or lean of peak or rich of peak, as long as you're at 75% power and go in 75 to 100 degrees rich of peak, and if you're at 65% power and be in 25 to 50 degrees lean of peak. Right. That, that's right out of the manual. So really the only difference when it comes to uh, where, for the health of the engine, of running rich of peak or lean of peak might be, let's say, in temperatures. Meaning that when you're running rich of peak, you have the luxury of being able to use fuel as a form of cooling. Mm -hmm. And Lena Peak, you don't have that. And so if you're running Richard Peak and you're in a hot environment or, or doing an ex, ex, you know, a climb over an extended period of time or some aircraft that are very tightly cowled, um, then in those cases you have that option to continue to add fuel through the mixture that may be not ideal for best, best power, mm -hmm. but uh, it gives that additional cooling and, and, and helps your engine. If you're running on the lean side of peak, then really all you can do is remove power by uh, removing more fuel, and, and that helps, but it doesn't help nearly as much. So that, that's probably the only case I can think of. Yeah, and the optimum CHT is about 385 degrees. So if you're at rich peak, you should be in that area. If you get lean or running lean a peak and you keep leaning, mm -hmm. uh, the cylinders do get cold or cooler and it, that's not always good. You want to keep the CHTs up to keep the oil temp up to burn that contaminant moisture out. Right. So I guess the bottom line is if you're interested in running lean of peak, you certainly, of course, need an engine monitor to know what's yeah. happening in your engine. You need to be set up properly. We've talked about that. and then. Uh, if at all possible, certainly you know you're safe if you're staying below maximum recommended cruise power. Correct. Above that, you really need to do some research and find out where those safe zones are to stay outside the red box mm -hmm. and away from detonation. Correct. All right, James, Tim, thank you so much. I'm here with Stephen Bordeaux, Director of Global Customer Support for Continental Aerospace Technologies. How are you doing, Steve? Good, Jeff. Welcome. 
Thanks so much for all the guidance that we got from your team here, the experts for Lena Peak operations of our aircraft. It really does matter to get information directly from the source. Yes, our team of experts here globally is here to support all our customers in the product support and customer service. So we have availability to get a hold of us via phone call, via email, and all those, all those avenues are listed on our website. So please go to the website, you know, reach out to us. We're here to support all our customers. And while you're on that website, please look into our new training programs. We have released a whole new level of training for our customers, and it's not just our mechanics. We also included in this training the pilots, the owners. It's built for all our customers. So please look into the training and, uh, and sign up. We're here to support our customers. Great, and I can say certainly as a Continental customer myself, I really appreciate making sure that I'm getting my parts, my support, really all the guidance directly from the source, the company that made my engine. Yes, we're the experts in the field. We, ha uh, we are Continental, we're proud of it, and our team's here to support all our customers. Excellent, so I appreciate it every time that I fly Continental. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff.